question, and today I will talk about and uh, about a uh, new way of describing the trajectories of test particles in the in metric uh, of the uh, index curve metric. And this presentation is based on my, uh, my supervisor of Mark and this uh, uh, work. Uh, and also this presentation is the follow-up to the last year presentation, which I showed on the uh, end, uh, 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 Congress on policies that are learned society. And in general, uh, we use the method which we developed last year to Schwarzschild. Now we use the same method to Kermatic, and I will show you our results. So let me start uh, from the state of the knowledge about this topic, because uh, as you may know, mm, <laughs> this quite old topic, uh, and it starts from the uh, care, of course, and his proposed proposition uh, of solution for the Einstein equations. And of course, when you have a solution like this, like there, there is another question, okay, how do test particles behave in such uh, environment? And the, the first step to, in order to solve this was made in the uh, 68, uh, by Carter and where he performed the Hamilton and Jacobi uh, decomposition and this uh, start like quite rapid evolution to that uh, field because uh, when you see it kind of rapid, it's not quite obvious how to solve these equations uh, right away. Uh, so uh, after the Carter uh, uh, and Jacobi separation uh, new papers in the same year in Israel start to appear, and we obtained the first solution in the equatorial plane. We started seeing how the uh, particle behave in the consistency uh, of the uh, curve that hole. In the next years, uh, basically in the 70s and 80s and 90s, the first textbooks about this topic start to appear. Uh, I think that in one of the best times that I have said on here uh, about this topic. And in the, in the beginning of 2000s, the new methods about the uh, no, no, new ideas about the parameterization of the equations of motion for the curve uh, appear, which they simplify uh, the problem. And we also in our work use, uh, for example, the idea of Mino, uh, so the Mino time, uh, and this is the idea of the parameterized uh, uh, time. Affinity, affinity uh, parameter, uh, and it simplifies a lot the uh, uh, problem. Uh, in the next year, the first um, uh, work about um, uh, solving the geodesic equations in terms of elliptic uh, functions appeared. This is the 2006 and 2009, and in 2010 uh, and <coughs> later years. Uh, and a hot one with Kahneman uh, so, uh, so solve uh, the geodesic equation for the karmatic in terms of Dijkstra's functions and it was uh, uh, almost perfect uh, and almost because um, in their solution they, uh, they, uh, they have a solution for um, all uh, types of trajectories except uh, these ones which have uh, which we call a turning point uh, in the, uh, under the horizon of the black hole. And I will show you where is the problem in the per, uh, per, uh, per slides. Uh, but uh, this was one exception of, in their methods. And this is something which our method now can handle. And so this. Of course, in the same years, um, this topic was analyzed from the different point of view. Uh, for example, uh, the new branch of uh, problems uh, with uh, dimensional lensing, natural lensings, uh, photoning uh, arise, and now it's quite <laughs> they're quite big. Uh, also, uh, people uh, analyze these problems uh, in the vicinity of uh, horizon, where we need to uh, black hole horizon, and for the black hole with the right things. And also, uh, for example, from, uh, I, from this year, 
hammer and bounce, for example, they also start, start to analyze this problem, uh, but uh, for a special kind of geodesics, which were interested for them. Uh, and we also can deal with their geodesics in that manner. Okay, so this is like just the tip of the iceberg, of course. Uh, this topic is quite old, and uh, for example, uh, on the vertical lensing is the vast topic by its own. Uh, but I think it's a good start uh, and set up for uh, what we have done. Okay, so uh, we start uh, in our paper with the metric in the bilingual coordinates. And uh, here there is, uh, we start with them because they are the simplest one. And they are like the first thing in which you can start uh, of testing your new methods. And there is, of, of course, a question whether you can uh, use a different coordinate system. And uh, the answer is yes. And we right now are working together with uh, Angelique Calcante, uh, Zona Patmon, and Anastasia Montana on the uh, solution uh, for the CAR with the, uh, in the CAR shoot uh, coordinates. Uh, the, there, there is some additional thing to calculate, uh, but I'm not sure where they appear, and, uh, but the method as a whole works, uh, also for this uh, much more general coordinate system. Okay, uh, so when you have a metric, uh, you can obtain a question of the motion for the test particle, and there are a few methods, uh, but they are all the classical, uh, of course for CAR, the best method is uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it's a Hamiltonian uh, uh, separation. Uh, and after doing all this, uh, you will obtain such a set of equations of motion for this particle. And what, what we have here? Uh, first, these uh, um, uh, variables are dimensional less variables, because we don't want to <laughs> worry about them. And they are defined here. So you have to basically remember that psi is a radial distance, dimensional less radial distance, capital T is dimensional time coordinate, uh, epsilon is dimensional uh, conserved energy, and lambda C is dimensional uh, angular momentum. Uh, then, uh, these functions are two functions, uh, Functions and function R is only a function of psi, function theta is only a function of theta. Uh, here we have, uh, they also uh, depend on the quantities uh, which are conserved, so conserved energy, angular momentum, um, Carter constants, which is denoted by uh, kappa, and uh, 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 spin of the black hole, and, and there is uh, additional planet parameter, a delta one, which is uh, 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 which corresponds to a type of geodesics. Uh, for delta one equals to zero, you have null geodesics. For delta uh, one equals to one, you have time geodesics. So if you solve this set of equations uh, for general delta, you will all obtain a solution which is true for null and time geodesics at once. And also we have two parameters, uh, epsilon, epsilon, and they are just a sign of the uh, direction uh, of your uh, trajectory. So if, the, for example, uh, epsilon r is equal to minus, minus 1, then your particle, particle is moving uh, to the center of coordinate system, if it's uh, plus 1 uh, outwards, and the same, is for, uh, idea, the same idea is for uh, motion in uh, theta. Uh, uh, okay, and um, for if you uh, do the same uh, in the curve shift coordinates, then the first two equations will be the same, and they are invariant uh, under this change of coordinates, which is quite nice. And uh, we, and you will have additional terms in uh, these two equations, which you have to uh, solve. So, uh, but uh, the, you have to, it, it's good to uh, see that uh, if you solve these two equations, 
then you can solve uh, this two equation as well because there are, this equation are just functions of these two equations. And this is basically what we want to uh, do. So at first we'll focus on solving these two equations. Excuse me. And then uh, by using the solution, we will put them in here and then integrate all of them. Okay. Okay, so if we focus on the first equation for the radial distance, then we can quickly uh, uh, see that okay, the R function is the polynomial function and it's the polynomial of the fourth degree where this a0, a1, a2, a3, a4 are just the uh, constants. Here is a constant, uh, this is a constant of constant energy, constant energy, and this is our final theta, and all of them are just uh, constant functions of constant of motions. Uh, so, uh, having this, we can now integrate this equations, uh, equation and see that, okay, this, this looks like that, and uh, here we have polynomial of the fourth degree, and, we, and, we, and if we know something about the elliptic integral, then we see that, okay, this is basically the definition of elliptic integral. So we have to use elliptic functions to the complete this square. And because we are dealing with Weiss class elliptic functions, uh, here I uh, um, write down uh, invariant, Weiss invariants, which are uh, which characterizes the specific Weierstrass elliptic function. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay. The same can be done uh, for uh, theta uh, function, the theta theta function. However, uh, it is uh, good to uh, change the coordinates here because uh, the theta function, you can see that, okay, it, it is a function of cosine of theta and sine of theta. So, Let's change coordinates and uh, uh, here the substitution. Then our new function for the uh, mo for the motion in the uh, altitude uh, coordinate uh, will look like this, and this is a function just a uh, function of mu. And it's also uh, uh, for the fourth degree. What is interesting here, uh, which we uh, we didn't expect, is that when you perform such parameterization, then uh, the, the code in mm, this uh, variables b0, uh, b2, b4 uh, are uh, very, um, there is some symmetry between them, this is fine, this b and a0, b2 and a2, and we don't know why it appears, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it, was, it wasn't uh, seen before because uh, people use here uh, cosine, cosine square, and then you don't see this symmetry. But it appears and is some way uh, interesting. Uh, okay. But if you have ideas on this, uh, we'll talk uh, later. Okay. So having this, uh, what we can do next? Here uh, we are using the uh, one uh, theorem, and this theorem says that. If you have a function, a general function of the fourth degree, with the uh, uh, invariants which are defined here, and you have an integral which is defined like here, so this is basically a little integral from the definition, then you can uh, then this you can write down x as a function of z. And this is how it describes that. So x is a function of z, where z is a parameter of this uh, p function. And this p function is like defined by this g2 and g3 invariants. And this term uh, says that, OK, so if this is quite powerful, because if, as long uh, as uh, our function is zero. Uh, under the square root, uh, then we can be sure that okay, this this whole expression will be with zero, uh, because oh, additionally we obtain a new description, um, yeah, description for uh, p function. So what is p function? And you can see that okay, they are just the functions of this f uh, function. So yeah, as long as this f function is real, then this uh, special function that function. 
expressions are also real, real so the whole expression uh, uh, will be real. Uh, and this is only one uh, only thing which uh, could uh, be problematic for us, uh, but uh, for in our problem when we are looking for real solutions, this is perfect. Okay, so when we, if we reuse this uh, theorem in our problem, then our new expression for the radial distance is given here. And uh, uh, what is also uh, very nice about this expression is that, okay, this is a function of uh, uh, epsilon r. This is epsilon r, you can, you, you can uh, as I said, this is the uh, element uh, which is correspond to the direction of motion. But it's an interesting part about this is that this is um, not epsilon r but epsilon r zero. So in this uh, solution you only set epsilon r at the beginning at the, as an initial value and then you don't have to worry about turning points about nothing. This whole expression will give you evolution of your test particle uh, in this space, basically. Uh, so, as a whole, this whole expression is just ex uh, a function of your uh, uh, time parameter. Here is uh, mean of time, is S is a mean of time. And uh, initial conditions, you just have to set uh, initial energies, uh, conserve the angular momentum, Carter constant, and direction of motion. And this expression will give you evolution for uh, your test particle. And this expression is also, as, as I said, it will really is, is true for uh, in bioelectric coordinates as well in the uh, curve shift, for example, coordinates, because we saw the same equation uh, for these two uh, coordinates. The same will uh, help for uh, a function. Uh, yes? Okay, so as a first test of the solution, we can check Schwarzenegger, and it should work nice if it's a good solution. Um, yeah, if we perform a Schwarzenegger, so if we take uh, uh, alpha uh, equal to zero, then our uh, a zero and one uh, will have uh, this this form, and our invariance, Schwarzenegger invariance, will have this form, which are basically the invariance and uh, variables. For the Schwarz shift, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so in radial motion, yes, this stands very nicely to Schwarz in limit. And for uh, motion in the altitude, so it's a coordinate, uh, you have to uh, do uh, something more, <laughs> and you have to use uh, some basic uh, 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 properties of Weierstrass uh, function. So. Uh, if we take this limit, alpha equals to zero, then our b0 and b2 uh, variables look like that. Uh, g2 uh, and g3 looks like that. And then uh, there is one very nice versus uh, uh, function property that versus function of this argument is equal to cosine and, uh, and also is scalable. And if you do this simple trigonometry, uh, basically, in that point, you will obtain this solution, which is exactly a solution uh, for Schwarzschild if you parameterize Schwarzschild with the help of middle time. And, uh, yeah. So, in Schwarzschild limit, you obtain Schwarzschild solution. You can also perform a uh, post uh, limit from the Schwarzschild, and it was done by Sharp. Uh, in well uh, from the beginning of 2011, I remember. And uh, if you take this solution and perform the entire limit, you will obtain the Kepler uh, equation for motion. Okay. So now, how to do with the uh, another two coordinates? Uh, it's harder <laughs> because now we have to integrate this uh, this function. The functions which are uh, function of S and these functions are uh, as they are function of the uh, Weierstrass P function. Okay, uh, I think we uh, um, uh, we can write it this down in the simpler form. 
and we see that okay, this whole integral is basically a, um, a function of uh, twin integrals. First, an h with plus, an h with minus, and i theta. This an h uh, plus minus and i theta are just uh, uh, these integrals. And here uh, they are equal to k1, k2, k3, which are basically these three types of elliptic integrals. And this is, um, you can uh, compute this, you can find the sum of these integrals in the tables of the integrals. So everything is uh, uh, at this point easy to do. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it works nicely. And also here is a1, a2, a3, and also b1, b2, b3. They are just a constant. Uh, so uh, you you obtain an analytic solution, uh, which is just uh, given by uh, by Schrass elliptic functions. Uh, okay. The same can be done with the uh, time coordinate. Uh, so okay, you will have. Uh, in some way different integrals because now this, this, this function is a function of uh, psi and psi squared. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it will still be uh, uh, given by uh, similar elliptic integrals. They are in the paper because they are quite long <laughs> and it's not a point to write it on that one slide. Okay, so let's check uh, how it works numerically because we also check this. Uh, and here there is a uh, table with the type of the uh, trajectories which we check. Uh, and there is these trajectories uh, are, uh, as, as we know, the all type of basic or all basic types of the trajectories. Uh, here you can see when the trajectory is uh, changed from the time lag to the non-geodesics. And here are the uh, conserved energy, conserved, uh, conserved uh, 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 packet constant. And uh, what is important is that okay, uh, the, this uh, naming style is from uh, is from the onion. So <laughs> sometimes it's, it's not intuitive. Uh, it has roots uh, in the analysis of the potential of uh, uh, for the carrier battery. So it's in, uh, could be problematic if you are not uh, in this field. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, the interesting thing for us at this point is here. Because there are two trajectories which they, uh, which don't have uh, real zeros. So uh, zeros of the R function, which is a function describing the radial motion, uh, you can uh, translate them as the turning points. Uh, so if you don't, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, there are such a theorist which don't have the real turning points. So basically, mat mathematically, it means that there are such a theorist which don't have the real zeros. And the previous methods uh, cannot deal with this. And this new method can deal also with this uh, type of such a theorist. Um, and here we have uh, two special uh, uh, trajectories uh, on the Victoria plane, which were uh, 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 analyzed by Romanoid uh, Balthus. Okay, and this is how it looks, for example. Uh, so, uh, here is a plot in the XY plane, here is a plot in the XZ plane. So, this plot, first plot, is like in the equatorial plane. Second is the uh, perpendicular to it. And uh, here we have an initial point. Uh, the, hmm, it's not very clear from that, from this, but the analytic solution is given by the average uh, continuous line and the hour, uh, and this is our solution, and the numerical solution is the dashed black line. So you can, uh, we have to pass me that. Uh, uh, they, they both uh, coincide, so they are a good group in the agreement. And uh, here on this plot, we have additional thing, which is that uh, these two uh, uh, blue lines, and they just uh, uh, says uh, what, what are the maximum value of the theta coordinate for <coughs> such trajectory. And this is also uh, depicted here on the, the 3D plot. And this uh, plot is just how the coordinate of time depends on the, uh, um, uh, uh, on the 
on the proper type of, of, of um, uh, such part, uh, this particle. So, yeah, uh, this is for flyby trajectories, this is how it looks for uh, bound trajectory, uh, everything covers here. This is another type of trajectory, uh, very classical. So, we start uh, just under the uh, horizon and move uh, under the, the first horizon of the hole. Uh, uh, yeah, inside of it. Uh, here we have flyby, everything corrects. Uh, here another type of bump trajectory. Uh, here uh, it, it could be misleading that uh, we are going in such a uh, good way. And the evolution is given uh, in, the, uh, in the past and also in the future. Here in one point picture, that's why we have this, uh, this closed curve. Uh, yeah. Okay. And here is this uh, uh, interesting trajectory, which was uh, which have uh, only uh, um, complex uh, zeros. Uh, so uh, it works perfectly in our method. And the same is for Nigel basics. Everything works here uh, perfectly. Uh, and, and yeah. And these are the spiral trajectories uh, which uh, are in some way also interesting. And we also, also can do with this. Okay. So, uh, to conclude, uh, we obtain a new method of describing these trajectories, uh, whole trajectories on, in the kernel field for the test particle, as well as for unlike geodesics. They are um, parameterized by initial position and uh, initial uh, and conserved uh, quantities. Uh, our solution is analytic. And uh, we have very simple expressions, especially for, uh, for uh, radial motion and uh, polar motion. And uh, our method, uh, and uh, I didn't mention this, but uh, the we create a code and package for to Mathematica for to test this uh, solution. And uh, you can find it on, on, my, on my GitHub as well as uh, on the servers of the Berlin University. And uh, every solution is coded there, so you can use this and uh, check how it works uh, in technical your problems. Um, and yet, this method was designed for working uh, with the simulations for Vassal uh, class equation, and uh, we hope it will work <laughs> great. Yeah, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. <clears throat> Are there any questions or comments? So, um, you know, so care apart from the killing vectors admits that killing tensor is one of the papers you not listed, but there is a work of Penrose and Walker which points it out. Why, why, how separability is associated to a killing tensor? So you have four first integrals in evolution. So you have action angle variables, which are, to my recollection, expressed in terms of elliptic functions. Okay. Once you do that, you reduce the problem to a system of uncoupled harmonic oscillators. So I guess my question is, why, how is your work going beyond that? If, if you've solved the problem by action angle integrability, uh, the, the relation between your coordinates and, and, and the actions is by elliptic functions. So it is the case that the geodesics are expressible in terms of elliptic functions. Okay, so um, I didn't see this paper and I, I didn't think about this in terms of oscillators. Well, that's uh, the point of action angle variables, but you're Yes, I mean, no. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but. Okay, um, maybe Patrick can answer this. I don't know what they comment on that. <laughs> So this is of course true what you are saying, uh, but um, so the point here, and, and, and of course you can start 
or you can write down the action angle variables for, for casual desics and then attack what you have. Uh, usually with um, um, Jacobian analytic action, this is what usually what, what people do, and of course then there are analytic formulas formulae for um, for the frequencies and so on. But the point here is, you know, to have a nice expression where you've got just one system of expressions for um, for the solution, uh, which is parameterized in terms of your initial data. And I don't think you can do this nicely uh, starting with um, action angle variables and uh, and the expressions they need to. Uh, at least I did not see that. Uh, uh, I was once you've solved the harmonic oscillators, the solution is but expressed in terms of the But in this is not exactly the harmonic oscillator, right? Well, I, I think the point of action angle variables is that it is. I mean, that, that is what we do um, to you, right? They, they, well, well, if you... Maybe let's discuss this later on, <laughs> like, but... But, so the advantage here is that you, you take the initial data and you get just one expression for all, all possible types. You do not have to know a priori what it is.